Well, it is time for the word on Wall Street. Top investors watching your money. Joining me now, Mahoney Asset Management CEO, Ken Mahoney, the Banson Group CEO and Managing Partner, David Banson, and the Fitzgerald Group Principal, Keith Fitzgerald. Guys, good morning to all of you. Good morning. Good morning. All right, David, I, I do want to start uh, with you. You know, we, we all obviously we're kicking off with all the earnings here. Markets are, are we've had kind of a yesterday was a little bit of crazy. We were red right now, but yesterday was a, was really choppy in the session, David. So I want to get your take first on that. Uh, and also the fact that we're waiting on the Federal Reserve today. The two day meeting ends this afternoon. And then, you know, Fed Chair Powell is going to have the news conference. And then der December durable goods in the next hour, uh, by the way, gains of nine tenths of a percent that month. So, David, throwing it all at you, the kitchen sink, what do you say? I uh, am excited to hear that yesterday was considered a high volatility day, because if yesterday was high volatility, then uh, we can live with that. Um, it, it, I think we've become pretty spoiled by uh, the volatility levels compared to, of course, what you know we had been experiencing for not just the COVID insanity in March, but really for most of 2020. And actually, we're in a much lower volatility environment now. And even bigger moves when you're at a 31,000 denominator in the Dow, 200 points is not what it used to be. And so I think we have a lower volatility environment for now, as investors have to kind of wait and see, are these valuation <coughs> levels uh, sustainable. I think that there is some kind of question, and we have to get deeper into earnings season to see where markets are going to go from here. You know, those valuation concerns that you're bringing up are actually going to be a big issue after the bell today. And Ken, I'll take this to you because of all the earnings that we're going to get uh, after 4 p.m. Eastern time. We're going to have live coverage of this. You've got Apple, you've got Facebook, you've got Tesla. Um, in particular with Tesla, you know, you've seen a major surge with this stock. It's up about 700 percent over the past year. Um, with regards to Tesla, I mean, Elon Musk really came out as a big star in 2020. Can he keep that going? I think so. I mean, look, it's going to be not so much what they did in the fourth quarter. They'll deliver. It's going to be pretty, pretty amazing. It's really going to be their guidance. And the more that people think about this, not as a car company, because you can't get that evaluation as a car company, right? The way you get to that is you look at this company and say, wait a second, look at the vertical storage. That's a big one that's happening right now. Uh, autonomous driving, that's a big one from Tesla. God knows what else is on that chalkboard behind Elon Musk uh, you know, for coming up. So, yeah, Tesla is the leader. Uh, again, are they going to be up 740 percent like they were last year in 2020? I doubt it. Mm. Uh, but again, I would not bet against them, let's put it yeah. that way. But you really have to think of this, again, not as a car company, but as a company that's innovation, uh, innovating. And you see what investors do. They rally behind innovation, whether it's this time or another time in history. When you have great innovation, money gets behind him. You know, Elon Musk, God yeah. knows what's on that chalkboard. I mean, it is a chalkboard, by the way. <laughs> well, I mean, despite all of his antics, to your point, I mean, he really, he delivered. He delivered on production. He delivered with earnings. I mean, you know, the, the guy really had, I mean, Again, a lot of people came out and after him one year ago, really at this time, and, and here we are later with that stock, a heck of a performer. Speaking of stocks, we got to talk about GameStop, guys. I mean, this is crazy. So this is the video game retailer. They saw a 145% increase in the stock on Monday. It was the second largest one-day trade on record. This is because of day traders. I'm not going to single out the millennials, but I'm going to go ahead and do it. Um, they piled into it. They'd been considered really a dying brand. They, they, at one point a year ago, they were under four bucks a share, Keith. You've got this. Basically, it's a short squeeze, you know, and, and I don't want to get too technical here, but you've got hedge funds shorting the stock and you've got all these, I hate to say it, but millennials on Robinhood that are pumping up the stock and they're going on to Reddit to do it, Keith. It's crazy. Well, you know, this is interesting because hedge funds for years have made money at the expense of individual investors, millennials and more people like me who have been around since dinosaurs roamed the earth. You know, it's ironic that the stock is getting taken apart the way it is. This is no longer about the stock. This is not even David versus Goliath. This is a battle between heroes and villains, and you've got to pick yours. It's a very dangerous stock to play in right now. But I think what we're seeing overnight, we're seeing huge margin calls. One or more of the hedge funds is going to blow up because they can't cover. I'm mm. seeing lots of stuff behind the scenes that say this is a very, very dangerous. I mean, we are witnessing history today yeah. in watching this stock play out. Do you think there's other stocks that are going to end up in the same kind of predicament, 
Keith? I do. And I, you know, and they're going to be unexpected. I think the regulators have got a real problem on their hands because what this points out is that decentralized social media has allowed formerly independent investors to accumulate knowledge and act in concert. This is like a lynch mob that's digital, or this is like crowd psychology that's digital. So the regulators are, as usual, a day late and a dollar short, but this is manipulation of the mm. highest order. And all of us, all four of us, gentlemen, we all remember the dot-com bubble, and we remember it <laughs> bursting. We were all there. Yep. I covered it. You all traded it. And I don't know. This stuff makes me nervous. We shall see. Ken, David, Keith, guys, thank you very much. Thank you. You bet. All right. Good to see all of you. Well, we've got a lot more.